Well, we could fairly call it a body of work. I think. It, it, it is. It's taken it is, on the fact. characteristic yeah. of one, yeah. and there are, yeah. you know, arms and legs and other parts. And, you know, yeah. as I said, yeah. I can admire, you know, like the kneecap and the this yeah. and the that. Yeah. But they do yeah. all come together. And what also is good, I think, um, and I think probably the big shift, the first really big shift, was in Fruits of the Poisonous Tree. Yes, that's correct. Would you not say? Which I, I was pointing out, um, both both Tom, um, who works at the at the Poison Pen, and my husband are, are fans of your, new fans mm -hmm. to your books. And I pointed out to them how unusual, in fact, I think it may be truly unique, in, in the proper sense of the word, to find a book about rape written not from the perspective of the woman or even from the perspective of the rapist, but from the perspective of the boyfriend, right. the lover of, yes. of the woman who was violated. And I thought it was an enormously challenging and ambitious thing for you to take Joe, mm -hmm. who up to this point has been the investigator, yes. and suddenly have a crime committed against his own lover, Gail, uh, and have to deal not only with the crime, but with, but with his personal reactions mm -hmm. and her. Yes. Yes. It was a fascinating yes. book. Yeah, yeah. I loved writing that book. Uh, whether one likes it or not, or puts it at whatever pecking order in the overall body of work, it's the one that was intensely satisfying for me to write because it addressed some of these major issues. Some of them sort of global issues, the whole subject of sexual assault and violence against women, and, and some of them more integrated and, and private issues such as the relationship between men and women and lovers and friends and relatives and and and, uh, and, and how does a woman who has been raped then react to her own lover and you precisely know, and vice versa and, and because so many sexual assault is viewed so tenuously in this culture especially in the arts when we go to the movies or read books or whatnot if you throw in a sexual assault there's always a murder or something else to sort of I wanted to build a book where that was the murder. There's not a single dead body in this book. Exactly. That's the corpse, but it lives. You can't just sort of step over it like it was a chalk outline on the ground. The body is alive and can respond and react and get angry. And that, that I loved working with that. It was fascinating to me. And I chose Gail because early on when I was sort of floating this idea, I said, you know, and I think, uh, I think I'll have to make Gail the victim. And I was along, far enough along in the, in the series that people had become fond of these characters and had taken them into themselves. And the, the universal response was, oh, no, not Gail. And of course, that cemented the deal because I wanted to palpably make this real to the readers, the pain, the anguish. This sure. was one of their own being violated. It wasn't some Jane Doe that I could dispose of at the end of the book like is so often done in movies and, and TV shows and other books. Well, not only that, you gave the reader a really firm sense that Gail was not responsible. You know, that's so often, unfortunately, yeah, one of yeah, the yeah. Um, the echoes of rape is that the woman then goes on trial. I mean, right. the general oh, sure, legal sure. defense, yeah. you know, is yeah. is she that was somehow. Looking for it. Yep, exactly. Yes. The yeah. enticement and, and defense yeah. and so forth. And so it was important, I think, with Gail, um, whom everybody knew, yes. um, to you know that we could we could cement the idea that she wasn't at fault. That it really yeah. was. Um, something completely yeah. um, perpetrated upon her, yeah. Yeah. and then you know, I would call it maybe the guts of the series in lots of ways. I would agree with you. Look, I would you agree know. with you. It was a watershed book. Lots were leading to it, and a lot came out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the references, the other, the other crucial, the other responsibility I understood when I did the research, and I took the research truly to heart because I spoke with many women about this, and I didn't want to play them false. Part of the exercise was that following a sexual assault, the rebuilding process takes a long time. And beyond, it's still going on. Beyond the scope of a single book. It exactly. Really so for like three or four or five books, or even to the present time, Gail is pursuing a, 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 a road in her life that she otherwise would not have pursued. And all this harks back to this watershed event and the rebuilding that she's had to do from that. A lot of her ambition, a lot of her going to law school, a lot of her becoming a prosecutor and then a lead attorney for a, uh, an environmental group, all these things came from that pivotal event. Now, that doesn't mean that you go on and on and on about how she's dragging herself from the, the rape event. On the contrary, this is rebuilding, this is a positive, this, this is a very strong, intelligent woman who is rebuilding 
So it's a positive thing, but nobody has any misunderstandings about the causal forces behind her present course of action. Oh, I agree with that. And it also, of course, marked, you know, first she and Joe became cohabitants of the same That's house. Right. And now, um, since you have sneakily decided to create for Joe a job <laughs> in which he can roam the state, um, it has allowed them to separate. But, you know, you don't right. have a sense that that's just the first step in a dissolution, no. which often it is. Yes, of you know, it but is. in this yeah. case, um, you feel that they've worked through so much together that uh, yeah. I sound like Dr. Ruth here. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I do think that it that it shifted the series, but it definitely um, does. You know, the whole the whole body of work is necessary in order for you to look at all of the characters. Yes. I think Will and Kunkel is just. Oh, fabulous. Yes, yes, um, yes. You know, you've got this difficult, one-armed, yep. impossible um, guy who's yet a brilliant cop. You and know, everyone he's, loves him. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's a real, a real challenging character, and now you're giving him. Uh, I thought some. I wondered what you were going to do with him when you've moved Joe into this yep. Vermont Bureau of Investigation, uh, and I'm pleased to see that Willie is in oh, fact yes. Willie's moving Willis with him all the way. Yeah, yeah, I would have been really crushed to have left him no. back in Brattlesboro. But you know what? I love the chief in Brattlesboro. The police chief has yeah. always been one of yeah. my favorite guys. Yeah. yeah. Well, such is life. You know, you move, you lose your friends, you'll see them every once in a while, um, and those—that's part of the pain of evolution. And I'm happy to make that part of the reader experience that you will long for characters. Oh, I think I think you do um, an excellent job with it. It does keep the characters fresh. It also has allowed you to keep uh, romantic tension between Joe and Gail oh, yeah. without having to go through lots of artificial constructs, right. which which right. I much appreciate. Yes. I mean, in real life, characters just don't go on stalling off the wedding forever. Right. You know, they either move forward or they move apart, and right. and whatever. And right. you've managed to keep them, you know, and in, in, in an interesting together apart, together yes, apart thing, dynamic. but without some yep. stupid sense, yes. which I much appreciate. Um, you also have tried in this series, I think, a variety of different forms. I mean, we've had open season is not so much a murder, but it's really a thriller. Yes. You know, it's really a That's chase right. after, um, mm -hmm. you know, a, a villain. Yep. And um, Borderlines is, what would you call it? Borderlines is more psychological. It's possibly the darkest of the right. books. Oh, I think it is the darkest. Yes, yes. and that's much more uh, sort of you can't go home again. Joe goes back to the place of his, of his beginnings when he had so much fun as a teenager, Uncle Buster, the Northeast Kingdom, the bucolic rurality of it all, and now things have, have, have turned dark and, and turned, not just because of the, of the infusion of some cult that is mentioned in the book, but 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 the rot extends further. Uh, his his bucolic memories really don't have any foundation any longer. Uncle Buster is fairly corrupted by alcohol, and 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 uh, and his cousin, whom he greatly loved and with whom he spent many happy years uh, in the volunteer fire department as a teenager, has a uh, has a uh, sort of fallen on the dark side. And this is this is, you will discover this. This is this is kind of like a passage through life. And, uh, Looking back over your shoulder, I was playing somewhat on Joe's not being a young man and having this long view of life. One of the one of the magic things about Joe is his perspective. He has wisdom, which he has gained through great hardship, uh, that he doesn't complain about, uh, but wears as, as an advantage. Very good. 